Hello viewers, welcome back to my channel. Today's topic of discussion is on round robin scheduling. Previous session already I have explained an example on round robin scheduling. So this is the second example for the round robin scheduling. This uh, definitely round robin scheduling already I have explained you. It will be what in the mode preemptive. The mode of operation is preemptive. And what is the criteria? The criteria is time quantum. So before you start solving a problem for any given question just remember first try to recall what is the criteria what is the mode of op uh, operation so here the criteria is time quantum time quantum is what maximum allowable time a process can run in this example they have given six processes in the question consider a set of six processes with given time quantum un units equal to two you are supposed to find out average turnaround time and average waiting time so these things you need to find out average waiting time and average turnaround time time quantum value given is how much two units so what do you mean by time quantum that is the maximum allowable time a process can run so if every process just schedule it for two units stop check whether any other process has arrived this logic already I have explained in the previous session students who are watching this session for the first time please try to uh, watch an example one on round robin scheduling then it will be easy for you to understand this example because here I have taken more number of processes that becomes quite simpler the previous one since I had taken only four processes there here I have taken six processes so to solve this you need to maintain two queues one is called is the ready queue and another is the running queue moreover I already have solved one a such example in my previous session this time I have taken six processes here so let us start solving the numerical what you have to do is just start this writing the values in the Gantt chart start with time unit 0 okay time unit 0 a time arrival time 0 which process has arrived p1 so p1 will be the first one better to first write it in the ready queue and then place it in the running queue so p1 you have placed here this p1 you from the ready queue you place it in the running queue P1 burst time is 4 but you will be executing only for 2 units and its remaining burst time is 2. The reason is in the question they have given time unit time quantum value equal to 2 units. So schedule every process for only 2 units of time. So P1 will stop at 2. Okay. Since you have placed P1 already here, okay, put a cross mark in indicating that you have already placed. Now at time unit 2, you check which are the processes that are available. Here is the arrival time 2. Before that at arrival time 1, at time unit 1, P2 has come. P2 and P3 are available. Place immediately in the red, uh, ready queue. Once you place this at time unit 2, P2 and P3 are available. You have placed this. Immediately you should place P1 which is still having its remaining burst time. Okay, That pending burst time is there. No? That is why you have to see that P1 will also get its turn after P2 and P3. Now P2 burst time is how much? P2 burst time is 5 but time quantum is only 2 units so P2 will have its remaining burst time as 3 still here you schedule P2 for only 2 units of time stop at 4 already you have placed here put a cross mark next come at time unit 4 you see whether are there any processes that have arrived at time unit 4 by time unit 4 uh, P4 has arrived and P5 has arrived both these processes have arrived P4 and P5, yes. P4 has come and P5 has come. Okay. But still you don't forget that P2 is having its burst time pending. So that's why P2 will come in future. Place that in the uh, ready queue. Now continue from this point. P3 process will be scheduled now. Okay. But P3 will schedule it, get scheduled only for 2 units of time. It will stop at 6. Then check by time unit 6, are there any processes that have arrived? Yes, P6 has arrived. And what about P3's burst time? P3 burst time is only uh, 2 units. So it will get scheduled for the complete 2. Incidentally, time quantum value is also 2. And P3 is having the burst time equal to 2. So P3 will complete also in one go. You can write here the remaining burst time 0. And P3 will not come in future. We will put a tick here indicating it has completed its job. Next comes P3, that's why P3 we are not going to write here. P3 has completed. You at time unit 6, which are which are the other processes that have come by time unit 6, P6 has come. Fine. Earlier P5 we have already noted down. So P6 has come. So P6 value also you write it. Yeah, P process P6 you include in the ready queue now. 
and since P3 has already completed its job, P3 has completed its job, yes, P3 will not come in future, we will not write it again, we will continue with P1 now, P1, P1 burst time pending is 2, now it will get completed it at time unit 8, okay, so P1 is also completing its job now, next is P4, P4 will get scheduled, what about P4 time quantum unit time, uh, sorry, burst time is 1, so it will get scheduled only up till 9. Moreover, here P4 burst time is 1, time quantum value is 2. So, burst time is lesser than time quantum value, no need to worry, just schedule it only for that particular uh, burst time and P4 will complete it in one go itself. So, P4 will get completed at time unit 9. P4 is also now out of the list. Next is P5, P5 you place it here, what about P5, check here P5 is having how many units pending, P5 is having completely 6, okay, schedule it only for 2 units of time, 11 and it will have its remaining burst time 4, that means P5 will come in future, fine, you have to write down here. Next comes P2, P2 we will see what about P2, P2 is having still 3 units, so now it will get executed 2 units, 1 unit of time will be pending still, ok. So, P2 has not yet completed, ok. Next is, that means P2 if it has not yet completed, it will come in future, write it here in the ready queue. Next is P6, P6 uh, you know, time unit, burst time is 3, schedule it now for 2 units of time only, for 2 units, so pending burst time is there, P6 will also come in future right here. Then now the next, uh, the turn is for P5, P5 will get scheduled now, P5's remaining burst time is 4, run it only for 2 units of time, fine, pending burst time is 2, so P5 will also come in future, write it in the ready queue, the next turn is for P2, P2, what about P2's burst time is only 1, so it will get completed its job at time unit 18, now its burst time becomes 0, so P2 is out of the list now. Now P5 and P6 are only pending, you can see here, out of that P6 will get its turn now. P6 pending burst time is 1, it will become 0 now and it will complete its job at 19. P5 is here, P5 remaining burst time is 2 units, it will end at 21. So previously we have scheduled P6, ok, put the cross mark, P5 is the last one to end. Since you have completed P5 for 2 units, put it here. So, P5 is also completing its job. So, this way you need to fill all the values in the ready queue and the running queue. Since you are using the ready queue, it will help you in keeping track of all the pending processes. Then you can place it immediately one after the other in the uh, running queue. The rest of the things are quite easy. You have already learnt also completion time. Completion time you have to get from the Gantt chart. Okay. So, completion time for P1. P1 is completing its job at 8 here, then P2 is completing its job at 18, P3 is completing at 6, P4 is completing at 9, P5 is completing its job at 21, P6 at 19. So once you do this completion time, then it becomes easy for you to calculate the turnaround time. Turnaround time is equal to what? Completion time minus of arrival time. 8 minus 0, 18 minus 1, 17, 6 minus 2, 9 minus 3, 21 minus of 4, 17, 17 minus of 5, 14. What about waiting time? Waiting time is equal to turnaround time minus of burst time. Burst time is here, turnaround time is here. 8 minus 4, 17 minus 5, 12, 4 minus 2, 6 minus 1, 17 minus of 6, 11, 14 minus of 3, 11. Write down the total uh, values, here it becomes 66, total waiting time becomes 45. So, so you can write down turnaround time equal to what? 66, average turnaround time equal to 66 divided by how much? 6 processes are there, average waiting time equal to 45 divided by 6. What are the values for these two? You can write down. This is 10.6, okay. 
if the time given is in milliseconds then it will be here also milliseconds 7.5 milliseconds that the final value you got here is average turnaround time is 10.6 milliseconds average waiting time is 7.5 milliseconds this is how you need to solve a numerical using the round robin scheduling hope this session is useful to you all and also i request my audience to please like share and subscribe to my channel thank you bye bye take care